Hi, my name is Rich. I use the he, him pronouns, and you're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop role-playing games with friends. This is part of the Intercontinental Group of Awesome group. I wasn't sure where to take that, but I had to use the same word group to describe a group. I heard you like the word group. I put a group in your group. Inter inter the IGOA, as I call them, so named because there are folks here alongside me in the United States and a number of us uh, are across the pond in Europe. So on Sundays, we meet together and when our time zones align enough for everybody to have the opportunity to play games. And I'm excited because this continues our ongoing campaign of Aspire, the City Must Fall. And I'm even more excited because I am not the GM. So let me hand the reins to you, Tyler, our loving GM. Hi there, y'all. I'm Tyler. He, him, pronouns. And yes, we're playing Spire by Grant Howitt and Christopher Taylor. And oh my goodness, we had so many things we encountered last time. So much information, so many things on our plate. And uh, I'm not going to go through all of what we've done. Folks should watch if you haven't, uh, if, you, if you're catching up. But I will catch our group up a little with what we've done. But before I do that, uh, first off, we have some safety tools on the table. Uh, we have our lines of fails and we have our X card. Uh, our players are all aware of the uses for these. And uh, folks at home, use safety tools, make your game better. Um, and I think... We last time around when we ended, I think off camera, I informed everyone they got a low advance and what they have kind of all been thinking and looking at those. So why don't we have our players introduce their characters and maybe tell real quick what their low advance is if that's been decided and then we'll get on into play. So uh, let's go off of our character keeper, but since so I don't have to always call on the same people. Let's go in reverse order this time. Sabine, introduce yourself and tell us about your character. Oh, hi, my name is Sabine. I use any pronouns. I'm one of the Europeans here, precisely said, spoken, well, whatever. I'm in Germany anyway. So, and I'm playing Bizarre, Shade Ride, the inks, the Inksmith. He is a reporter. He reports and stories, he writes stories, he even might have written a play, but we don't know because he won't be really upfront about it. But he talks a lot and talks a good game. And he has been invited by, uh, by this, this session to meet up with the ominous patron of two performers who seem to be able to do stuff that they shouldn't be able to do and, and not in a kindly or good way, but in the way of uh, having demonic help so he's very excited about that well you know to fi figure out what's going on because having demonic help on stuff is wrong and uh you picked up a new advance want to just tell it real I quick did i did i um i will reveal today that i know how to move in the right circles i have a sideline in writing uh society reports and so now I have the high society domain and can declare that there's a party nearby and that I'm invited. Um, that might be useful if we're stuck in Amaranth and we need to vanish um, because we can go to a party. I'm curious if you, uh, your high society column, which, you know, high society column is, you know, social events and a bit of gossip. Do you write that under your, your real name or do you have a nom de plume for oh, that? Oh, I think writing? I do have a nom de plume. I have to figure out one because it is a, um, an Elphir styled one. Mm, wonderful. Oh, cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, next up, um, Jen, why don't you introduce yourself with your character? Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Jen. I use the she, her pronouns. I'm playing as Fanara, who also uses she, her pronouns. Uh, Fanara is an edgerite, so she is very good at business and making deals. The eponymous business bastard of our group. Uh, as of this session, she's got the gold-blooded advance, which gives her religion as a domain. And once per situation, I can allot stress to silver when I would normally allot it to blood or vice versa. 
And uh, whew, curious to see how we how we make it through this session. Awesome. Thank you very much. Next up, we know who you are, Rich, but tell us about your character. Hey, I am playing for this game, Aramitz Fleck, the Lajan or priest of the group who believes fervently in Libye, the uh, goddess of moonlight who favors the drow. He's part of the ministry or this little, uh, you know, revolutionary, but some say terrorist group out of the fervor for freeing his people because it is the right thing to do. Aramitz with this low advance has uh, entered into a community uh, that evidently was part of where the chapel laid and all the people that he knew. And it, this group is known as the many and it's, uh, it's a polytheistic world. So our Lajan Aramitz knows that there are other gods, but I think when uh, we talk about his dreams, and the emergence of this low advance that uh, he somehow knows, or at least interprets that the mini and Limier can work together and that it is blessed by her. Uh, this advance is called the chorus. And as he sleeps, now Aramis's mind will be filled with the whispers of the many who grant him different powers. And I actually have a table where I roll a 10 sided die at the beginning of every session, and that is the representation of uh, uh, the, the whatever it is within the dreams that he perceives and defines the extra abilities that he gets. So I'm very excited. Awesome, me too. Uh, next up, Alex, introduce yourself and your character, please. Uh, hi, I'm Alex. I use he, him, and I'm going to be playing Gerald the Masked or Gerald. Hezabak, because we came up with surnames uh, last session and never announced it. Um, and I gained, well, I haven't chosen which of these two that I'm gaining, but both of them are fairly spycraft heavy, either magical face changing or always being aware of my situation and being a little bit more fighty. Awesome. Thank you very much. And last but certainly not least, Jan, introduce yourself and your character, please. My name is Jan. Uh, I will be playing Zordin Kozlov. Uh, he is a knight of the Order of the Kraken Bell, which is named for the ta the tavern that's, that's well, that the, the Order works for. Um... um he took, uh, he, he, he didn't, well, I, I got uh, my advance. Uh, it was a, a, a promotion. I attained the, the, the rank of Knight Admiral. <laughs> um, I, I now command a portion of the fleet of, uh, that, that <laughs> defends our lovely city. Uh, I, I got a mighty mount, a robot. I have named my robot, um, and I put it somewhere here, uh, the bell clapper. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, and it comes equipped with a swivel gun. Oh, fantastic. Though it does have a little problem at the seams, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's not fast. It doesn't look good, and it doesn't, it like... <laughs> I had to choose. <laughs> like, <laughs> it doesn't leak a lot. I'm like, but I want a gun. <laughs> so it does leak. A wise choice. Wise choice. All right. So that's our crew. And last time around, we had kind of a pile on of information. We found out that, uh, first off, uh, Aramitz and Sorden went with him, to, uh, encountered Molly, a blood witch uh, who gave up pretty much the name of the Alfir who is behind all of this. Uh, Joshua um, Rhyme 
crack. Let's see, what is the type? So sorry, rhyme cracks. I have to look on the NPCs because I'm a bad person. Was rhyme cracks beneath. There we go. Who is? enormously powerful uh, Elphir, who was once on the council, a major mover and shaker, but several years ago had retired from public life because of age. And Molly informed uh, Aramitz that she has the desire to live forever. And the path she has chosen is through demonic means and that she is behind what is going on with this trek that she is creating eidolons has assembled legions of the demonic to serve her in an attempt to trans i guess transcend life and death but molly says that whether she succeeds or fails it will mean a demonic infestation of spire and aramid's as she tells you this, you sort of understand what she means by that. When you open up the world to demons, they, you know, first off, they're, they're horrible. But the more that you do it, the more likelihood that it is going to open up a portal, is going to open up an infestation which cannot be closed. A massive, almost like a, a nuclear bomb of demons. And when they come in, they change, corrupt, destroy everything around them. Uh, this sort of thing generally only happens like in the war to the south against the Knolls. The Elphir uh, are fighting. The Knolls, in great desperation, will open up one of these massive things. But when you do, you're leaving. Wherever you leave that place, it is now demon infested and it is gone. Um, the, the ability to clean it up is extremely hard and the demons twist and destroy wherever they are. So should she do that, it is very bad for Spire. We also found out uh, that she, like I say, has kind of retired from public life. Her husband is a very wealthy, high up uh, importer, exporter. Um, and he's still in public life, but she hasn't been seen for several years. And Molly says she's hidden herself because Molly was her teacher in blood magic and she has melded blood magic with this demonology and is hiding from Molly because I suppose at least Molly implied she was scared of Molly, but that may be just Molly's point of view. Um, she, uh, she did tell you, though, that if you need help, uh, she, she did mark you, Aramitz. She drew a bit of blood and said that your blood could call her if you need her. We also received word from Fenara's cousin um, that a shipment was coming in uh, the next day, pretty early next morning, uh, that was for this crash who seems to be the knoll working, creating the Drek and the one of the big creator people for, for getting the, uh, in, the epidemic of this drug out there. Um, and it was going to be on Perch. And to remind folks, we had a contact, a major crime boss who had also talked to Venara saying, if you need, I could get you up quietly and safely to Perch. Um, just give me a word because I am opposed to this dreck. It is cutting into my own illicit uh, businesses. So I'm willing to help you there if you want to go to Perch. Um, we also, to load in more, have a party tomorrow evening we're going to with Zor at Zordon's old master's uh, mansion where a play is being put on. Um, Fanara and Vazar had gone to a performance of Sebastian and Lorelei, who we believe has connections with the Swan, a serial killer working for Rhyme, but for, uh, God, I am horrible, so bad with things. Uh, uh, Joshua Rhyme Cracks Beneath, 
um, and we believe has been procuring the blood sacrifices. He goes around, cuts people open, and steals their heart. Um, and he is seems to be some sort of actor. Um, and this is a performance where the Tsar has been invited to meet Lorelei and Sebastian's patron who has taught them some pretty naughty stuff and we think may be the swan himself. And so Fedora got some uh, tickets, some invitations from our old friend Hyacinth and uh, have the two of them invited. Um, along with that, uh, we had um, Zordon encounter Mourns the 200, a paladin, a drow, uh, but a paladin of the solar pantheon. Uh, and an interesting encounter Zordon had there. He, uh, Mourns put across some intriguing ideas and he has invited Zordon to come to this same party because he is in pursuit of the swan and has asked Sorden perhaps to come and be his champion should trouble arise in this party. Um, we had two more invitations. Actually, I think Fenara had gotten two invitations and Bazaar in the invitation had to, uh, another person that he could bring. So we have everybody potentially able to be invited to this party. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Mm, gracious. And we ended with us, uh, with the group Sans Vizar, um, going to the chapel, receiving the blessing of the glorious lady, um, and relieving some stress as the silver moonlight shone into the chapel. And our last image was a sky whale coming to port. Um, and so everyone has a chance to go home to get a little rest before our very eventful day. And Aramis, you have strange dreams. Tell us about these dreams. In Aramis's dream, he wakes at first. It's one of those waking dreams. Like, am I asleep? Is this actually happening? Because he wakes in his chapel. And when he rises up, he looks to see Yvette's mural and some more art has been painted upon it. But in the mural, there's a new piece before it was the, the look of not the spire, but the homeland and the beauty of it at night, the moon shining over many idealized but beautiful places from our home. But now in the mural is this obelisk, this tower. And that's the point when Aramis realizes something is different. Maybe not a miss, but different. The tower wasn't there before. And he moves closer, closer still, runs his fingers along the dried paint and traces this tower. And during this dream, what is transferred into him or onto him by the, cow the, the tower itself is the skills of, the skill of investigate and the domain of order. Somehow this tower imbues him with a skill in that domain, gives him an understanding that while fleeting uh, and is foreign, but something he knows to accept. Yeah, that's what his dream does. And as you have these, these voices, and I want to ask, do you recognize that these are snatches and snippets of faith of the home and and how do you think the glorious lady feels about it you her servant being touched by this there are there are songs in chorus some of them joining in song some of them in languages that have been forgotten by our people 
and our subjugation. But also there are voices I recognize from here, from around the chapel, from the community. And the moonlight itself shines upon the tower as well. And Limye, she understands that many voices must be lifted up for our people to gain freedom. So I think that at, at the moment, she is not jealous of my change or my pivot or of my uh, ear listening to the voices of the many. And so your, your dream-filled sleep, you wake the next morning feeling touched, feeling changed. Fanara, as you lay down in your bed, dreams come to you as well. In fact, dreams come to you of Yis far away, the homeland. What, what dreams do you have of home? Uh, the dreams that I have about home are often kind of vague, you know, youthful, unstructured time uh, characters coming and going, wanting different things, reacting to them in different ways. Um, I imagine, you know, sitting outside, eating some kind of seasonal fruit and just watching the stars and then maybe going out on a, a brief adventure to get something else for a friend. And as this pleasant dream, this dream of memories is, is going on, a face in the crowd, a face that you have not seen in many years, but who you could see their anger. They, they made it so that you had to leave. They made you have to leave your home. Who are they? You don't have to give me a name, but just, uh, who were they to you? Kind of a rival. You know, I thought that, thought that we were kind of friendly rivals, but it turns out that wasn't the case. And I think you could see, you know, it's, it's that dream sort of logic of while there's others, they are the most distinct you see in this dream as you hear the sound of coins being counted from this person as the dream fades and you wake. Gerald, you also dream. Your dreams are dark, not particularly, let's not say dark as in scary necessarily, mm. just darkness. And there's a voice, a woman's voice, singing. It is beautiful. And you could see a blue glow turning to pink in the distance. And this, this woman's figure, she's, she's naked. A thin layer of ice surrounding her. And you hear a voice behind you that you recognize. You have heard his voice many times. What does he tell you, Gerald? He says that she'll, she'll change the tower. After her coming, the tower will be changed. Inside of that ice, you see 
Behind her mask, the eyes open. You see her face, which had been so blank, slowly begin to smile. What, what is the emotion that strikes you as you see her? I think it's fear. In yeah. that smile, you can see so many deaths. As the dream fades as you wake. Meanwhile, Sorden, you dream as you're out on the river the clapper beneath you, your mighty, mighty ship of the line, you're polishing the swivel gun. The river churns by you. It is, it is filled with the mess of Spire, as Spire sort of dumps down everything into the river to be carried away to be someone else's problem. That's very much the Alfier's way of thinking. We discard and someone else can clean it up later. And, but the sense of freedom as your own, your own ship, ship out there in the river. And you can see there are barges coming in with uh, goods from other places. Uh, you could see uh, people who are out there still attempting to pull some bits of fish from the river. Mostly they go beyond the very docks area because the fish you bring up near the docks are, let's say, unappetizing. But you can see them coming from further up and down river with their catches. And they're all, you know, they'll pull their, their cap to you or they'll, they'll give a, a, a respectful nod, knowing you, you are the law of this river coming into these docks. When you notice, looking down into the river, you see a building, maybe something deep beneath the surface. And as you lean over the edge of the river, it's almost, you know, in that dreamlike sense, you travel down into the river. The water flows past you, but you can breathe. You, you have no trouble. As you come to a bar beneath the river, and you see a man, a drow, old, sitting at the bar he looks up at you and you you could tell from his eyes from the way he sort of sways he is very intoxicated what does he say to you sir i think he says um be better. <laughs> As he says this, and he, he lifts his mug, which paradoxically, despite the water of the river being around it, you could see a foam of the beer as he takes a, a heavy swig of it. And as he drinks, you hear, dong, dong 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 the sound of a bell as you your dream fades and you wake bizarre your dreams are of good times of parties it seems as though you're in glorious mansions but they're constantly changing the whirl of people dancing you see both drow and alfir um, separate, but in the same parties. And 
this seems a happy dream for there isn't the cruelty of the Alfir that you usually see at these parties. There isn't the clear class distinctions of Drow and Alfir at this party. You seem to be in a place where everyone is finding joy together. And so probably part of your mind goes, this clearly is a dream. As you are sampling the wine, sampling the food, perhaps even taking a twirl upon the dance floor with the beautifully dressed people, you find a dancing partner. They have a mask on. You can't tell if they are Alfir or if they are Drow. But they, they seem friendly. They seem to care. In, your, in that dream sense, it's almost as though you know them. They lean in and say, it is beautiful here, isn't it? Yeah, yes. I nod. It is. However, underneath beautiful things, so often, so often there is rot. Yes, that's true. You always been able to dig out the truth no matter how beautiful the layer above it haven't you bizarre i have tried to figure out the truth yes be careful bizarre there are beautiful things who have their eye on you And I, I, will, sorry. I will see through their beauty to their through the truth. And, and, as, and I lean in and say, if I can, and then I will see through the truth to their beauty. Oh, and as you you twirl, and there's that sort of whirling of the colors and the people, it's hard to truly focus across the dance floor. The dancers part so that you see one person. Who is that person you see on the dance floor? And how do they make you feel? <sighs> hmm. Oh, I know. Is that person I danced with the masked person? And they reach for their mask, and it's the mask. It's one of the masks that's, that I've seen Gerald use. And as they reach for the mask, I think they might be Gerald, but I'm not sure. And I'm terrified. I'm absolutely terrified at what will, at what I will see behind that mask. And as it lifts, the dream fades, and you wake. Mm. Good. And so morning has come. I think that uh, we have so much on our table that uh, does it seem fair we would all be getting together to make make plans for the day? So I think um, seem like uh, we have several places that we tend to meet. We have the chapel, we have the crack and bell, or we have Fenara's stall. Um, Alex, where would you think that uh, the group is meeting up today to make make plans for what we're doing? I think we would have gone to the Crack and Bell, that back room that we've used occasionally. All right. And so with the clatter and noise, even though it's fairly early for the Crack and Bell, you know, it's 10 or 11 in the morning. There are already some folks up and drinking. Uh, you can hear the, as, you know, the groups getting together to go walk the, you know, do patrol. Um, they're talking about that, uh, you know, taxes need to be collected. 
Um, and so there are a few groups that are going to go out and do the their legal shakedowns of the neighborhood. And uh, and you're all around a table. Sword would have made sure that the there is drink available. And uh, let's discuss what we have coming up. Uh, just to lay out there, we know that the delivery is coming in here in just a couple of hours. Um, and we can, if we want, do some like flashback to things we did earlier this morning before we got here. Like, say, Fanar, if you wanted to get in touch with Gris about going up or whatever. All right. Yeah. We'll play. <laughs> so I think uncharacteristically, uh, Sordin is not wearing his armor, but he sort of got it like he's got his breastplate lying on his uh, lap. And he sort of like he's got a, a rag and he's like, is Actually, Sorden engaging spit, in armor maintenance? He is spit polishing his armor. <laughs> All right for the party this evening, right? <laughs> hey, Gerald, so? after after like holding it in for a while, he's just like Z Z Zordon just and he just takes the armor away from Zordon and starts cleaning it properly. Because <laughs> You want to make a good. You want to yeah. make a good impression, right? Sort of. You, you, you don't spit polish armor. It's. I mean, how how. You po You use polish. I mean, you, there you was... polish polish armor. Yeah, but <laughs> there. Look, I I don't know. There was someone that the, there was someone yes, in the yes. service. Exactly. There was someone in the Let service me... for Splendid's light, first light of dawn that did it for me, and then they would give me my armor and. I... It's okay. And now just, I just... will do it for you. Gerald, show him while you do it. Okay. Everybody wins. Oh, we're discussing it. I was expecting to be watching. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm watching. It's a saying for my endurance yeah. you teach a man to hunt, I teach a man to polish. You never did this once. How long has it been since your durance? And you've just been, oh, oh dear. <laughs> isn't, isn't that what you have a squire for, though? I mean, isn't that... Is she here? Oh, I... right. Isn't that, that a squire? I, that, that's what I understood from, understand from the ancient night <laughs> romance novels. I've read that the knight gives his armor and stuff to the squire to polish. But I'll look over at Thursa. I'm really curious. Um, <laughs> she's giving the side-eyed stink eye to Bazaar over that. <laughs> what? What? You need to learn this. You want to be a knight one day? You don't want you to be, be a knight that's better than I well, just towards Zordon. I mean, right? And I, I will pay attention to and she Excellent. pays attention to what begin. you're um, Would this class as dress for success? Um, you absolutely can do that, Spend yes. an hour helping an ally prepare for a difficult Ooh. endeavor. Yes, nice. this is an excellent thing to be doing. Getting <laughs> yeah. out their clothes and advising on methods of approach. <laughs> You'll be rolling with mastery on compel and deceive. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> very, so very nice. Nice shiny armor. The shiny armor makes nice. you more intimidating, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And you look more trustworthy, which is a mistake. <laughs> uh, very good. You look like you have the means to get a job done. Uh, so we're not going to intervene with this thing, this transaction. Is that... Is that a fair assessment? Because if we're polishing sword and breastplate now, we don't get into fight now. Next I, thing, right? Look, I think we said it would be too I'm, dangerous anyway. I'm going with a paladin to my former former master's mansion. Yeah, that's this evening. The exchange is this noon, I think. So mm -hmm. unless you can time travel 
which I don't think you can. But if you could, can you teach me? What? Oh, there's... I just need to get ready. <laughs> okay, okay. There's there's also a few hours between noon and the... Yeah. The great thing about polish, evening. it can be reapplied. Okay, okay. So... I mean, I need to dress up for the party as well. This is not how I'm going. I mean... Not the worst. It's not high society uh, stuff that I'm wearing right now. You know that. I mean, I can yeah. go like this, and they would all think I'm I'm the uh, help. Mm. I have a mind to go and get a new outfit myself. Mm. Anyhow, so it seems like last we spoke about it, the consensus around perch was that perhaps we point um, well perhaps the paladin points. but also perhaps father callus oh right yeah but if father callus is a servant and he goes in there and starts to preach wouldn't they just kill him i mean just because he's a zealot doesn't mean that his reaction to everything is preaching Yeah, but he's still only one person, right? Aramis, does he have many, many allies in the church? It doesn't seem so, because those allies didn't fight for him when he made trouble. And he didn't... Oh, he didn't seem to have a great deal of power politically. Out of character, we did learn in the slurry of things that we learned in the last little bits of uh, last week's session that father Kellis stole a bunch of liquid moonlight before he left oh that's right thank you for that any goodwill he may have had uh has likely been squandered he stole so much moonlight and to kind of just a, a bit of a reminder i think we we talked about perch there had been a thought of maybe going up there to see what was going on and maybe finding where stuff went, but not engaging and then deciding if you want to point out mm -hmm. where it goes. It was more of a find mm -hmm. out a bit more without engaging okay. yeah, would be the perch thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. So as long as we keep our heads level, and our face is more or less unseen. I think that we could learn a lot of valuable information that mm -hmm. we can apply at the correct times to stop this operation. Okay. Because whatever we do tonight will probably have a great impact, but But depending on our success level, it could simply create a small power vacuum, large power vacuum, or have a worse result and, and having something to fall back on that continues to chip away at the flow of Drekken, this beautiful city that we love. That's all to the good, I think. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, infiltration, we learn what we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fine. Cool. Right. Hopefully, Sorden me. won't need his armor. That's mm. always a bad thing to assume. Mm -hmm. That is a bad thing to assume. That's true. We just hope. Uh, so, even like with the work I've done, I think it's better that Zordon has the armor with. It's It'll be easier to clean up the armor than Zordon. So it's, and you know, blood comes off easily enough if you get it early. True. Does it? True. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it does. The sooner, Probably. the better. 
So it's a no. I, I, I nod vigorously as I get right yeah. into the grooves of <laughs> the shape. Getting the blood out. <laughs> Not to betray my class or anything, but you know, cold seltzer water. I know, right? <laughs> it gets everything. I've done a laundry before. Um, so it sounds like we are going to perch, and it sounds like we're going as a group. Mm -hmm. Fanara, did you get in touch with Gris? Do you get in touch with Gris to? Yeah, as arrange? soon as I'm as soon as I'm done plowing through whatever breakfast hash that was served to me here at the Kraken Bell, I uh, I go and I find that one kid who's been camped out in front and send him the message. We want to go up. All right, and uh, he. Yeah, and runs off and uh, it is very shortly thereafter you receive a message back um, that they will have arranged transport and they give you a um, so let me pull up um, they give you a merchant that you will be going up in their wagon to perch got it um, you will be going to Lower Perch, which um, I suppose I can share the map. I always love sharing a little of the map. Um, so for our up and down thing here, as we see the middle city, there's upper or Lower Perch right here. And we mm -hmm. see all the little nets and bits. This is where a lot of people live up in mm -hmm. this area, uh, underneath there, kind of hanging nailed and trussed and tied to this spot here. Sounds safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it explains the hang under in the on the other side of the on, on the top down side of the map. Mm -hmm. And that right here is middle perch, which is this area right here. These things are this. Um, and then upper perch is along here. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, along here. Um, so what you'll be doing is coming up and coming to the top of Lower Perch, mm -hmm. um, and then you would have to go underneath. Mm -hmm. So your merchant is going to get you here and get you right underneath Nice. where this will then happen. Um, it's possible some of you have been there before. Certainly, Fanara, it is entirely possible that you would have been to Perch on occasion. Um, this is both upper, lower, and uh, middle uh, Perch are where all the goods come in from Sky Wales. Um, you know that there is in, you know, in the under bit, the lower Perch there, um, that's where the early worms uh, operate out of. So, you know, that is that is a connection in there. But uh, you, your cousin, had given you a spot uh, in the uh, perch area that this order was supposed to be coming in for Gresh. So you, you kind of know the, the area you need to get to to see it. Um, so I think we're going to, uh, unless someone has a preparation, I'm going to have y'all beat this merchant and be transported up. Anything anyone wants to do before that? I think I might want to prepare. I mean, we could get in fisticuff trouble, right? It's entirely so possible. I might prepare my, my knockout punch spell because, you know, having access to the fight skill would be uh, kind of useful here. Mm-hmm. So I will go and do this. And the way the spell is done is that I will read, uh, no, I will write a fight scene and uh, be very pretty and, and act out a bit of the fight scene, but then write it down. And then as I kind of do that, I kind of understand how this works. For some reason, it's, it's magic. I'm kind of conning myself into knowing how to fight. Do you go off and do it alone or do you take anybody with you? Do I totally do your... go off and do it alone. I mean, uh, this is a kind of a bit. Um, I'm, uh, since I will about... make fun of you if I see you doing this. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And, and I would I would not blame you because this looks, uh, this looks a little weird. Of course, uh, it might happen that 
somebody who is oh kitty uh who is sneaky and uh wants to watch this um can mm -hmm. so i i'm not i'm not the stealthiest of individuals <laughs> um but i am uh the cv the cv and the call mm -hmm. this has nothing this is not an investigate so um, and plus one to start with and then one for deceive and yep. one for a cult mm -hmm. if you have those yeah i do okay let's see how that goes it's a nine so yeah that works oh take no stress excellent and so having worked through the the moves of the great pulp heroes you write you, you're feeling confident. You know how to do that one mm. punch. Oh, you're so solid with it. Yeah, I'm so good at this. <laughs> Aramis, is there anything you oh. wish to prepare? Really bad at this, though? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Okay. I did the ritual at the end of last session to help out with stress, so... That's done. Um, the other stuff I have is kind of in the moment or not applicable to this. So I think he's good to go. Right. Uh, Venara, I'm guessing Golisette will be coming with you. Um, anything else you wish to arrange beforehand? Hmm. I should probably bring a weapon. That weapon should probably be a sword. Ooh. All right. Um, would mean it's illegal, but uh, that you know doesn't necessarily mean you have to to stop it. Doesn't um, mean I have to keep it. That's very true. And um, we're going to be on perch, and it's just it's shady land. It's going to be a concealed sword, of course. Have it? Uh, do you? wish to have it arranged to be up there for like your hidden stash sort of thing? I think so. Excellent. Uh, Zord, uh, Thor's are going with you, I assume? Yes. Because and... she will not be able to attend the, the feast. Uh... And she is a little pissed at that. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going up armed and, and armored, I assume? Yes. Uh, anything else you wish to arrange beforehand? I think um, he will arrive early and, and have a drink in the Rotten Wallow. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So you're going up without the, without the merchants. You're going to go up on your own. I, I will... I, I will I will meet them ahead, I, I guess. Okay. That's perfectly fine. Um uh, so getting up there and uh, uh the wallow is kind of a place where people who aren't necessarily of the perch can go and be there, you know, have a drink, people coming in to pick up things. It is set up so that it is because the perch is a little uncomfortable for a lot of people. They're you know, it's, it's, it's a scary, you're hundreds upon hundreds of feet up in the air. Um, and there's just nets and wobbly bits of things that you walk on normally. Um, but they do kind of make, this is a space that is a little more solid. So it could kind of feel a little less frightening for people who, who normally you know, aren't, aren't used to this. Um, the people of Perch tend to like tie themselves off or have lifeline things that they do. And as you get there, you could see whole groups of people that will like jump from a place and swing on a rope to get to another place. And there's this just wild sort of movement up and down and around the places there. Um, along with that, you are seeing tons of the mega corvids. Um, the mega corvids, the big crows. Oh, right, right. So. Um, that are bringing in things from the sky. Well, you could see off in the distance the sky whale dock 
uh, our area where they're coming in and you could see the the big ravens fly back carrying things and some of them are going to different places of you know the perch and some of them are coming in and flapping and lighting down here amongst the uh, the detris hanging beneath the perch uh, and you get yourself set up with a with a drink um, you are you know with your armor and and your weapon you're the sort of person that folks aren't going to fuck with much. I mean, you know, there, there's a certain uh, amount of respect that goes with someone, A, who is allowed to wear these, and B, looks like they could use them. Uh, so you get yourself situated there, and you're made aware of, of where the group will be going. So you can connect, be there to watch, all that sort of thing. Uh, Gerald, is there anything you wish to do before you go, or are you set? I think I a little bit of research. I with a little bit of research, I'll pack some clothing specific to the the perch. Okay. To like you know local local dress, um, and a backpack full of masks. Oh, all right. So, the the main body of the party meets up with this merchant who has a uh, set of large wagons. They're going with uh, some of the there. There are some that are full of things that are going to go off on sky whales, and you figure they're going to pick up some things and bring them back down. Uh, he is. He very quietly, as you come up, kind of motions you over towards one of the uh, wagons, which has a kind of fault set uh, to the back of it. So you have a space that you can get into and then it closes off and they have things over the top of it. So it would pass quick inspection, not seeing uh, anybody in it. And when I say large, like these things are, you know, these. They're, they're quite big. They're 20 foot long, six foot wide, big, huge things. Um, as we know, Spire doesn't have much in the way of mounts. Uh, there aren't a lot of like uh, animals that are used for transport in the Spire. And so when the, you, you see there's a large group of people milling about and as it gets started, people will get themselves hooked up not hooked up, but shoulder to the yoke, so to speak, and you've got 10 people pulling each of these wagons as they begin moving their way up Spire. It will take a little time, uh, but uh, being on the, the roads designed to, to handle this and people being, you know, used to getting out of the way, it's a steady progress as you begin heading up. And when you reach the spire, the overhang, um, they begin unloading as this merchant comes and Lady Fenara opening up the side and he lets you out. He says, uh, well, that group there is heading down. You should be able to go in with them. All right, thank you. I clasp his hand. Uh, I hope you speak well to me, uh, of me to the Gris. This was a very smooth operation. Thank you for your help. And you move over and they take you to a lift and you're kind of, you know, they, they maneuver you so you're in the midst of a group of people shoving crates and things like that to this lift. And the lift is on kind of a, a pulley system so as you, it actually goes out over the edge of perch Eesh. and goes down. And then okay. once it gets over the edge, it does a thing where the whole of the pulley system leans so that you then go underneath and are lower down more from there. It is, for those of you with a fear of heights, scary. This is a, you're swinging in the breeze occasionally 
one of the giant ravens will flap by very close and you'll get caught in the breeze of the wings and sort of sway back and forth. It is noisy. It is smelly. Um, the people underneath here build out of whatever they find. And usually what they find is the things that have fallen off the side of Spire and been caught in their nets. So you will see beautiful pieces of uh, carved wood or even like pieces of masonry that have been patched together in this hodgepodge of buildings and structures beneath there. You can see all the people on their ropes swinging about, uh, the noise of people. Um, those of you that have a familiarity with Perch and perhaps you Aramids, even if you haven't been here, have heard the people of Perch believe that there are gods in every single thing. Each thing has its own god that is bound to it and they give it respect. And when it is time for that piece of whatever it is, that item has no longer any use whatsoever. They send it to the graveyard of small gods. Um, and they will use it to its very end. And when it goes to the graveyard, those small gods wait until there is another item for them to become bound to and become useful yet again. Um, and as you are brought down to a platform, um, Fadara, you, you know that you are not far from where this uh, shipment is to come in. Sorden, have you left the, uh, I believe you're at the Lady and Crow, which is there at the gutter. That's the bar that's... Uh, um, I, I saw the written wallow on the map. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I had taken you to that. There's a bar there called the Lady and Crow. That's the one I kind of described, but we certainly I, can have I, you at I the I don't other. know. Like, I just saw the map. It's fine either way. <laughs> I'm All at right. a bar. Um, and so you... Are you going to leave the bar at about the time you're figuring they're coming? Or are you waiting yeah. for a message? Okay. And so you start walking, you know, how do you feel about heights? Um, I think I'm, I'm fairly used to it. Uh, having been in the service of a fairly high uh, elf here, I sometimes had to take uh some air transportation to because of course elfer don't travel with uh like uh, carts and wagons they just take an, uh, a corvid or something like that so yeah they he, he he's he's gotten used to it mm. uh, i think thorza is not used to it no. and you can <laughs> see her like white knuckling the railings of things that you're on um she will have taken a piece of rope and imitated the people here of kind of tying off and sliding the rope along. Are you doing that or are you just kind of walking steadily? Uh, I think there's still like, there's there's a difference between how the, the elf here travel and how people are walking on ropes here. It's like, okay, this is a bit uncomfortable at least like there's it's not like when he looks down it's like ah, and then he's frozen but he's definitely going to use some extra security rope okay good idea and as you move you're mostly able to move along like the catwalks and the platforms because you're going to a place where they bring in cargo they've got to have a yeah. stable platform for that but still especially with your weight in that armor a lot of these bridges are swaying back and forth. Exactly. And Thor's yeah. is kind of oh, beside you. Uh, so sort of, I, I do not like this place. But uh, we don't have to be here for very long, so... Uh... That that reassures me, so sort of. <laughs> Well then, let's go, come on. And so you make your way to the platform. Uh, the rest of you... Um, are you moving up to try and get an observation on where this delivery is to come? Is that the idea? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. I'll make a little loop around to, to pick up my package. Excellent. And, and so, it's mm -hmm. probably like 
behind a building sign in a void space that you'd never think to look and just like thump thump drop your your sword is uh is there waiting and uh you quickly slide it up into your uh where it's not visible your kind of robes or your enveloping clothing yep uh, i've got a special jacket just for this <laughs> my sword coat my sword coat <laughs> um and uh you meet up you see sword coming up and you meet up there and uh and kind of position yourself to watch a group comes heavily cloaked and hooded two very tall figures um you're you're gonna guess these are gnomes um they're they're taller than drow and were they you know the elf here tend to be taller than drow these would be very tall elf here and elf here tend to without good reason not hide themselves they have no need to well i mean they've got their their extra faces their masks just mm. hanging out um and with them is a a woman uh, she is masked, but you could tell she is a drow. Um, and uh, they come to this this uh, platform, and you see them. She sort of directs them to wait, and they go over a little towards a corner, and you see them kind of kneel, squat down, waiting, as she's pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um. You had been, one of you at least had been informed about uh, Thrida Strays, or Stares, that's it. Um, I believe it was you, maybe, Aramitz. Um, someone who has uh, been talked about as being heavily anti-drug, um, kind of a crusader against drugs, mm. but who had been involved in this drag. Uh, and that's where I think that Aramids, maybe you and Sorden had found that out when you shook down the dealer you knew. Okay. Yeah, that had that that's not something I recall, but I trust you. So <laughs> you think it may be her. Uh, you were told that uh, you know, the reason maybe she was doing it, she wants to be an Alfier so bad and that lifestyle is so expensive. Uh. Uh, but you you have enough signs and from the description, you think that's her. Hmm. Um, they wait 10, 15 minutes before three of the ravens come flying in and perch. Uh, there. They have, two of them have large crates on their back. One of them, uh, and, and each of them have a, a drow flyer, uh, one of the, the uh, bird masters uh, basically flying it. The third COVID, Corvid has a person on it. They are wrapped in multiple layers of clothes of cloth including covering their face um and when i mean wrapped i mean almost like mummy wrapped and you could see that they're tied up now you are in visual sight but you can't really hear at this distance do any of you wish to get within listening distance I totally wish, but I'm, I yeah, totally wish. Let's, let's see what that would involve because I'm not a sneaky guy, but I'm so curious. Yeah, we, we might have some sneakers amongst the bunch. It would be um, sneak for sure. And commerce or low society would all work here. Uh, and then there's other ways to go about it. You, you know, you can pull off your way to be up there and seem like you should be, or, you know, there's a lot of approaches. I mean, uh, I think Gerald will try and get up close for listening, not for, not in disguise or anything. 
All right. Well, let's start with you then. Uh, well, unless we want to try and group action, have Gerald helping one, you know, trying to take one or two up with him. No, I think I, it, I, I wouldn't want that because he's the best sneaker among us. So he gets a head start, at least from my my perspective, but I will follow yeah. because I'm so curious. I need to have this story. All right, Gerald. I, I think I, I would like, I could see that Bizarre wants to follow. So I would just like, as I'm going through my backpack for a mask, I would be like, stay close. Just stay out of sight and we'll be fine. I apologize yeah. if I don't respond. And then I take the mask, which I have to bite into like the handle around the mouth to hold it to my face. Um, and it, is that your onyx mask? This is my mouthless mask. Okay, that's I, the one that keeps you quiet, right? Yes, no sound with my actions. Can, I make no sound with my actions and I can spread that silence to people and things close by. I Very cannot speak nice. while wearing the mask. Um, all righty. So let's have you roll a sneak plus I had those other two domains that would work if you have either of those. I do have a second. I have two sneak knacks. One's dirty work, which this doesn't feel like it is, but um, yeah, you need to pick. Yeah, pick. I one. think I need to nick, and I'll pick something that fits this. Um, Um, shadowing? I, th I think that's a solid one, yeah. Okay. I think that's Implying useful in a lot of things. Getting close to people without them noticing. Yeah. All right, okay. so you're going to get another die. And do we feel like that this is... I don't know if we feel like this are That's three helping. already? Yeah, I think that's four already. Oh, no, you don't have a domain, do you? No. Okay. I have, I have a domain. I mean, I could. I mean, somebody extra pair of eyes to. Okay. Yeah. I might yeah. not. I have a little society. All right. So then I think we can go with that. And that puts. Uh, to four? Yep. That puts us up to four and does mean that Bazaar is in the danger with you. And this is obviously going against Shadow. Yeah. And let's see. A um, nine. Okay. Um, I think that then that the two of you can move up quietly, keeping crates and such like between you to where you can get within hearing distance. Um, the COVID ri Corvid Riders <laughs> Corvid Riders um, are uh, you need to sign here yes, and uh you can, you know, one of them reaches up and grabs the person bound, kind of pulls them down roughly. And you'll definitely need to sign for the prisoner. And you hear the woman say, yes, yes, of course. Uh, line up the crates here and um, I will be acting. My patron has all the rights to take this prisoner. And there's this, you know, she shows paperwork makes the signs on these documents um and she motions to the two in the you know that she came with who move up and kind of take the prisoner as it's been described um grabbing hold of its arms but you're close enough to hear as they pass by the crates deep guttural voices say don't worry brother you're here to serve a lower purpose. I think I, I look to as a, I can't say anything, but, and you, you can't see any facial features behind this mask, but I kind of tilt my head like, you know, implying a raised eyebrow as much as I can. <laughs> um, and as they take the prisoner off and again, kind of stop, slink into the shadows they're waiting um these crates you see the woman begin to open you know have them open them she looks through them nodding and she 
pauses, she reaches in and she pulls out, and all of you can see, um, she pulls out a box about three foot long, um, but pretty narrow, only maybe six foot across. Um, and she pops the lid of that and she pulls out a silver, looks almost like a, uh, a telescope, uh, but it has a weird kind of uh, handle to it across the bottom. And those of you, probably Fedara and Sordan, um, it has a feeling almost like a weapon as well as being this sort of telescope. Would Investigate and Occult or Academia help me uh, identify what that is? Um, we could certainly give it a shot. Um, because I really want to know. Uh, so I what think should academia. I use? Uh huh. Okay. So that's three. Fine. And I think we're still worried about shadow here because I think you're having yeah. to like stick your head out yeah. to get a better look and all yeah. of that. Wow, it's a four. So this is pretty. Yeah, I stick my head out and uh, yeah. Let's roll a d four if you don't mind. I do, but uh, I guess I have to, so. It's a two. Take two points of shadow. Okay. Um, and you, uh, you look at it, and again, it kind of looks like a telescope, but uh, if anything, it, it, it has a humanish feel to it. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, Gerald, you see Vizar has very much exposed himself. I mean, looked like it was a, a little bit of a glance around the corner, but now it's become a full-on kind of lean and... What you, do feel, you, do? Uh, you feel some uh, hands grip your shoulder and pull you quite forcibly back. I don't really, I know I'm not going to make any sound, so I don't worry about just doing it quickly. It's just get him out of sight. And for our purposes, I think I'm going to go ahead and have you roll Fallout for this, Bizarre. Okay, this is, it's just one stress though. I'm... Um, I mean, I can't roll oh, that's lower true. That's than true. one. You had, you had one already there. So, yep, you're fine. All right. Um, and you're doing something reckless for a story. That's true. So, roll me a D3. Okay. Yep. What'd you get? Uh, six. So three, it clears up the stress right away. My, yeah. yeah. That's a weirdness for, well, I, mean, that's a I, think, I think you roll the whole stress and fall out at the end of the scene though, not in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. So we'll hang on, but you can hold on to your three. Okay, cool. Um, all right, um, as, she, as she's holding this up, she says, this, this is good. And she will click it and you see her kind of put it back into her own possessions as she begins uh, directing, calling, uh, this needs to go and, 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 and having porters come running up and begin stacking these crates into carts. You see that she's putting most of them onto one cart, but she's put one on a smaller cart. And uh, she motions and the two figures with the prisoner come forward and start moving onto the, uh, to take that cart away. As they do though, she's kind of surveying the area. You could tell she's a fairly paranoid sort. Um, and she begins walking about um, I'm going to have 
let's see who I think is the most obvious to get. Sword, you're the most obvious to get attention, I think, uh, being fully armed and armored. So I think we need to get a, hmm, probably something like either a sneak or a deceive. Um, to try and avoid her, like, tagging you as someone of interest, someone she needs to come and deal with. Um, then I would prefer deceive. <laughs> All right. You're trying to go off the uh, city guard or yes, important I'm, artery portion? I'm, I'm, I'm probably pulling the, like... <laughs> You know, straightening my my newly gotten badge of uh, a knight admiral, even though it doesn't mean much in this area of the city. It's like, well, still, you know, shipping lanes. It's very important. That's why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> All right. Here has almost certainly passed through this area at least once <laughs> in the past week. <laughs> Sounds like you've got order as well. I do. All right. Um, and this will be going against Shadow, which you already have four in Shadow. Yes. <laughs> mm. But because someone polished my armor, I have Mastery and Deceive. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So you're rolling four dice. Um, hang on before you roll four dice, though. Right. Uh, she is a difficulty of one, so take it down to three. Right. Uh, da, 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 one, two. Could I possibly assist? You certainly could. How are you assisting? Uh, I'm going to follow along with Sorden as sort of a a concerned consulting citizen and just discuss security matters. That in, makes perfect sense. In the vaguest top level sense that I can. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, this is a place in Azerite would be concerned about. That makes perfect sense. So you're back up to four, Zor. All right. Four. That is a ten. She, her eyes kind of note the two of you for a moment, but then pass on. Aramis, you've, you know, been watching, you you know where Bazaar, you, you know, Bazaar and Gerald are on this side of Great, so you could kind of see them. Um, and as the presumed gnolls move over and begin move, getting to the cart, you see one of them's head kind of but lift. Where did the prisoner go, though? He's with them uh, and is going okay. to be hauling this cart. Kind of, they're putting him to the yoke. And was that the small carts? The, the small, small box? He, uh, has the, has the uh, only oh, one, one crate. Yes, she has right. the, she took a, a box and mm. stuck it in her own pack. Mm. Um, but you see him, the head lifted just for a moment. That hood drops back enough that you could see that kind of hyena face of a knoll. And you could see their nostrils flaring. They are smelling something. And they kind of motion, wait a minute to their companions. And he seems to be moving towards where Vazar and Gerald are. Uh, and just so I'm clear, the people we're meeting with, they shouldn't know Aramitz at all, right? Uh, great. I'm going to go right up to them like I plan on talking to them and I'm doing the like have you heard about our our lady and savior Limye and like I'm reaching for pamphlets. Oh excellent. Uh, you are also aware that having gnolls in the city is while it's not unknown they generally tend to be prisoners so they you know this would be a situation where they wouldn't really want to draw attention to themselves so you're doing a really nice idea of a distraction here to, to handle this so 
that sounds like it's a what you think, compel or deceive? You know, I will take deceive for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, and religion, since I'm talking about my religion, I think so. Yeah. Cool. I guess the blessings of Limier and protect us all and look at the moonlight and yeah, all, all that stuff, just rattling off a bunch of. You are looking at a difficulty of one against this, this dole. So you're minus one die. Okay. Uh, minus one die. And I have one for trying. I have deceive. I have religion. So two. Um, so yeah, total two. Hold on. Let's see. Nobody's performing an action on my behalf. One of these days, I'll pull that one out, but I, I don't love it because it's. I mean, they are over. sneaking up there and hearing for you. Yeah, but trust me, I, this one's the other part. The other side of that coin is is badness because the stress goes bad, bad for mm, them, and gotcha. I don't I don't want to super do that. So, yep, it's just two dice. Here we go. Uh, Oh my, it does not go well for me. My highest oh. die is a three. It's a what, a three? Three, it's a failure, and I will take stress. Wow. You will. Roll me a d4. We're going against shadows still. Oh, By the way, during this scene, but well, after this stuff has happened, but during what this is, whatever this is, uh, Gerald will be doing something. Okay. A one. Oh, not so bad. So add one to your shadow. Okay. All right. Um, and as you move up to this person, and you're, uh, you know, begin your spiel. Uh, he does sort of, you know, duck his head down so that the hood falls lower. Uh, but he, I, I have no time for your religion. Oh, but Limier has time for you, my friend. <laughs> what are you doing, Gerald? As this guy seems like he's probably going to push past Aramids. Um, I, I first like touch Bizarre's shoulder and like put a like a finger. Actually, I put the finger to his lip, like a, sh and I take my mask off, and then. I kind of like, I look across to Fanara and just like, and then I'm like nodding my head to the where like that individual crate was put and like tilt my head like a now or never. And I, I see if uh, what Fanara's uh, thoughts on the situation are. I trust her for, like, you know, for risk assessment. Let's see, two knolls, bunch of porters, what's her ass? This is dangerous, but... Oh, yeah. uh, but at the same time, it's... I think you might... I, I can see you're like, hmm, and then I'm, I, I just tilt my head again a little bit like, you know, time's running out on the making of the... <laughs> and you know the <laughs> go I mask back in and I try and use the all the distractions of uh, Aramitz and Zordon to I want to see what's in that box okay so you're we're with our original plan. We were thinking, following this to see where it goes. You're wanting to get in and see what the crate has. I mean, if I'm stuck underneath this carriage or something. Oh, so okay. so maybe but like in, I, okay. I, I, I would like to if I if I feel like I could get a look right now. I would like to have a look right now. All right, uh, then um, I think that you're definitely going out of sneak again. Hmm. Um, and unless you're, unless you have something else you think, you know, like you're trying to bluff your way up there deceiving, or you're going to go up there and stab him in the back and do it that way, or, but, uh, otherwise it's sneak. Mm -hmm. uh, um, one, have a, I, I, I might have, I want, might want to do something parallel to this, just saying. 
Okay. Uh, what parallel thing would you like to do? I would like to free the prisoner, of course. Okay. How many how many guards are on that uh, wagon right uh, now? You are. Uh, it's worth mentioning. You are pretty sure this is a Knoll prisoner, and from what oh. you've understood, okay, this is them bringing in more people. You know, that whisper they were giving implies they were coming to join the Knolls already working on this project. Oh, okay, okay. Then I then I'll leave that uh, okay. for now. Okay. Well, if it looks like Vizar's not going to join a fight, I'm not going to use my dirty work, stabbing, sneaking. I'm okay. going to use my shadowing. Uh, All right. And uh, again, I don't think you have a domain that's hitting here. Um, so no. three dice. Yeah, no one's helping this time. Uh, well, there could be help from Aramitz if that's what he wishes to do. I'm by... happy to help. More okay. than happy to help. Because you've got you are you are right there in this guy's face. He's going to, you know, be trying to bodily get by you, but uh, you know, you could continue to be a distraction to him to help in this situation. Sounds great. Yeah, I'm All into right. it. That takes us to three, four. <laughs> Difficulty of one back down to three. Uh. <laughs> Ten. I got a ten. Gosh, you're fine. Ugh, y'all are. I think uh, I'm silent. I, I'm like stepping in within the cones of vision. All right. Just, you can slide into this this wagon, um, and you know it's it it has a cover, so mm. I mean you would slide in there, mm. perhaps you know. You could try to secret yourself away, stay in the wagon wherever it goes, but you know, you that's exposing yourself. Yeah. You will have to take a few moments to open this crate, no matter what, if that's your intent. I mean, I'm everything is silent around me. I've got a dagger. All right. I want to try Jimmy the lock. I don't you, you know. quickly slide in where this crate is and uh this um, Noel, that's with you, Aramitz. I tell you, your religion. No, I please, please. I gave at the office. Um, as he <laughs> slides by and turns around the corner, uh, to see Bazaar, uh, standing there. And, I... and he goes, Why are you sneaking around here? Oh, I, um, I'm. Gosh, don't be so loud. I'm I'm following the priest. He looks back at Arabic. You kind of are, are there enough to to overhear this. Yeah, well, he just exposed me. I look at Right, right, right. Uh, you just exposed me. You, oh my gosh. Uh, hi. I wave at Arabic. Ah. I'm I'm not, I don't know this guy at all. I look uh, he there's some shady stuff going on here. I've been paid to watch him, and now you've blown my cover. Roll me a deceive plus um, low, uh, low, society? low society or crime. Low society seems fine. So I'm rolling three dice. I think. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. No, it's bark and squeak. Right, let's see how that goes. Oh, there's a 10. Yes. Oh, y'all kill me. <laughs> well, oh. I failed already once, so. He, he kind of roughly, just, get the hell out of here. Don't make, <sighs> you, he sort of elbows you, Aramitz, as he pushes back. It says, you should watch out for this one, sneaky sort of as he grumbles and makes a motion, and the cart begins moving as the other two begin pushing it, and he comes over and grabs hold of it, and they rather quickly get to a trot. Um, as the woman uh, falls in kind of beside them and climbs up, you hear someone 
climb up to the front of the cart, Gerald, uh, and you are moving at a decent pace. Um, Sorden, what are you doing as all of this is going on? Good question. Um, is there is like is there any way I can get a bit closer without you and you and Fanara have kind yeah. of pulled off this this inspection? You know, figure out y'all could just continue walking around, looking like you're yeah. minding your own damn business. I, I think I think that's that's what what Sorden will be doing. Uh, just, just you know, making his way up there with Fanara then. And uh, yeah, All try right. to get closer. All right, then. I think we're going to kind of close, start closing scene. We're going to take a bio here. Mm -hmm. okay. As this cart is moving out, the two of you have, are moving up closer. And uh, why don't we go ahead and take, let's take six minutes. All right. All right. Well, the wagon is moving at a decent pace as um, Fanara and Sorden, you have kind of moved closer to it as it's like you could intercept if that is an intent, or you can follow at a, you know, respectable distance if you wish to do that. What you thinking? Uh, I'm thinking we follow at a respectable distance and yeah. not intercept. Um, if if we intercept now, we run the risk yeah. of not being able to see its destination. That would be a mistake. And okay. plus, Gerald needs time to do whatever he's going to do in that cart. How Ooh. fast is this cart going? Like I say, they're at a trot. So, I mean, it's it, it's moving faster than a, a little bit of a walk. I mean, it's, you know, knolls are, are bigger. Uh, they tend to be a bit stronger. And uh, this is a fairly lightly laden cart. So, you know, consider it like a, you know, a, a, a swift ride. And secondly, is there anything that is, that would be contrast, would contrast against the road that's in the cart at the moment? How do you mean contrast? As in, it would show up if I it out of the back of the cart. <laughs> Breadcrumbs, exactly. Oh, um, there's not a lot in the cart, um, mm. other than this this box, um, but you know, you could, uh, you could, I suppose, leave coins, but people tend to pick those up if you just drop them. Um, you could always cut off pieces of your cloak leave that behind or um you know you it's gonna be the cart I is different I, than the i sigh take my dagger to my cloak and then little wisps of like almost like ribbons of cloak go flutter out the back of the cart excellent i try and limit it to junctions just after a junction anytime i feel like we turn a bit i then Sigh, cut another bit. Another bit. Nice. All I right, so you're moving along one. pretty good. Uh, Sword and Fedara, you have to quicken your pace to keep it in sight. Uh, but the two of you following along, and you notice the flutter of a, a ribbon coming out of the back as you can quickly surmise what Gerald's trying to do. Um. Bazaar and Aramitz, I'm guessing the two of you are also going to begin to follow? Definitely. Sure, yes. I mean. Yes. All right. So. I mean, Gerald is in there. Of course. <laughs> you may have to, to quicken your pace a bit, Aramitz. I think uh, Bazaar is probably, probably hastening along um, as you're all following after this. You see, she sort of makes a motion towards the wagon that's in front and it peels off going towards one of the bigger lifts where she continues in this one deeper into perch um and you go for several blocks you have enough time gerald if you wish to try and pry open the lid and see what's in here i'm 
as soon as I've got my ribbon of cloak strips plan in place, I start to work on the the lock. Uh, it's it's not locks; it's just a crate. So you're really oh. just prying open. Yeah. Um, you pry open, pry a board away, um, and as you're looking in, what you see is there is some mechanical devices look like look like lab equipment um, is some of it. Mm -hmm. um, you see that there are uh, carefully packaged in there some bundles and some bottles of various substances and even just casually there is a like a little bit of a shudder goes down your back as you can almost feel the evil off of some of these things that are in these mm. models. Um, it has a palpable sort of darkness feel to it. I will not touch this stuff. Um, and the followers, uh, you, at, at a couple of times, you really do need those ribbons to, to know which direction to follow till you see it again up ahead. Um, as it has made its way to a much smaller lift, Gerald, you feel the cart slowing and uh, you hear the woman, uh, we're going up three levels. And uh, a, a band, yeah. I quickly, I take one of the ribbons, quickly tying, like I mull over for a second, quickly tie three knots and boom out the very clever um and you hear the woman get off of the cart as uh, it there's the sort of shudder as it begins moving up and she says to, she says this equipment should help you very much in your work crash from what i understand some of these substances were difficult to procure but everything you've asked for will be there. And he says, you can tell your mistress that this will speed up our work considerably. But there have not been as many of the pieces from your little bird. We will tell the swan to advance his plans, but he intends to procure you two more this very evening. Good. This work is not easy. Remind your mistress of our deal. We are to be freed when she is done. Of course, my mistress is nothing if not generous. How much longer? We have put together three of the major Eidolon. Once we have the fourth, we should be able to combine them. Then, then your mistress can begin her work. The woman says, she will be pleased to hear that. There is some concerns that I have. Tell me, this fourth sister that she wishes to communicate with, communicate, she wishes to subsume the fourth sister. As you say, what do you know of her crash? I know your mistress plays with things she doesn't understand. That is why our deal is that we leave before she begins her ritual. We will not be here when the fourth sister arrives. My mistress is in danger, crash. You must tell me all you know. Little trow, I must do nothing for you. He 
hear the woman sort of, <clears throat> you cross me at your peril, Crash. Look in your library. It is well stocked. The fourth sister is not unknown. One guesses your mistress is on Reddit. But, little trow, she opens the portal for the fourth sister. You will learn much more. <laughs> rest of the party, um, you reach where this lift is and find the, the ribbon with the three uh, knots in it. Uh, there is a, a lift man um, there to, and he, he looks up, uh, you heading up? Yes, sir. Three levels, please. He moves over towards, and you can see there are like several platforms on this structure. And he says, uh, uh, and uh, he, he motions out for payment. Pay okay, um, the man, of course. Uh, yep. And uh, he pulls on a pole there. You could hear a kind of chiming. And uh, he says, uh, on you go and pushes to a platform. You can see where one of the other platforms is already moving up on this structure. There's a second platform that you're not getting onto. You get onto this and it begins rising and kind of a jerky at first, but then more steadily crawling up. You could hear the kind of clink, 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 clink of the chains as it's drawn up. And maybe for some of you, it's the first time seeing Spire in this fashion. Uh, and the surrounding area. Um, you could see the, the sort of community that's outside. Um, the, it's mostly thrown together, a little bit shanty-ish outside. Uh, but there are some farms out there producing moderate amounts of food because the land itself is blasted and red um, dirt. Um, you can see as you go further, you know, as you are getting out there with such a good vision, um, you could see that uh, beyond the town are the roads. Maybe Fanara, you even remember coming down one of them, heading to the east to uh, years. Uh, you could see there are some caravans on the way. Um, and Getting up, you could see out the sky whales and the corvids flying back and forth between them. As you climb up um, several levels, three levels, um, and come to the silver quarter. Um, which is uh, one of the nicer, getting towards nicer places. Uh, it has the Tintangel Junction for the old railroad uh, up there. The Pistoliers Club is up there. Um, and you come to a spot called The Hole, uh, which is uh, a space, just an open space, uh, entering into the Silver Quarter. Um, it is open enough that, uh, Corvids fly in and out of there. Um, and, uh, you could see them passing through. Sounds safe. <laughs> Gerald, as you have reached the top, reached the silver quarter, uh, and the cart moves off of the platform, mm -hmm. the woman moves around and you hear her talking. Uh, she says, uh, we, while we have a moment. And you're pretty sure she and that crash guy are coming to get into the cart. Okay. The, car <laughs> the cart, is it 
only one opening at the back? Is it? It, it has the back, and then it has like because it's it's closed. It is mm. closed, um, almost like a kind of stoga wagon. You know what I'm talking mm. about? There, the old the the wagons that the when you see westerns that they have, yeah. they have like the, the fabric kind of, over like right. some beat kind of arched. Yeah, right. So up front, there is uh, would be a space where you could pull that aside, and from the where she was sitting, you could look back in. Um, and then there's at the back, there's the kind of gate, the thing that you put up and down to pull things out of. Okay, I, I make a quick decision. I choose the side that feels like there's no one on. You're so cutting your way out. I'm cutting a way out. Just. A, just a little bit to open up between the wood and the fabric so I can just slide out. It doesn't matter if I hit the ground with a thump. I've still got that mask on. True. I just need to hopefully have no one looking. All right. Well, this is definitely going to be a sneak. In case, in, in case of emergency, I have my... Well, I do not put my dagger away after the cut. All right. Uh, this is... Uh... I say this is sneak. This is crime. Yeah, I think I I feel like crime's your only bet here. Well, yeah, I think crime's your only bet here. Maybe commerce. Yeah, I, I not high society. I'm afraid not. No. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, and you're um, going after. Uh, you're going against shadow. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to, um, yeah, uh, I guess this is shadowing, maybe? I'll let you get that. What the hey? And again, you're I'm working a with a difficulty of one, so minus one die. This is cruel. Uh, so that's, is that three? I think it was oh, three two. minus one. So two, yeah. See, I, I said I would help you out with the stupid actions um i got one and a nine <laughs> blast you <laughs> as you cut a quick slit sliding through it just as you hear the gate at the back clunk open um you quickly look to either side to catch your you know your wherewithal mm. and you could see that uh the hooded knoll that was at the front pulling the wagon has moved over and is unbinding the prisoner and you now can see for certain as it pulls back the wrappings around its face it is another knoll and uh, has pulled out a cloak and is helping him quickly get a cloak on and and hide himself but not be wrapped up as a prisoner anymore mm. uh you here, crash go. Someone's been in this crate. Quick, uh, here is here is the ledger. What is anything missing? Let me see. Damn trow! All of them sneak thieves. Ah, uh, seems as though most of them. Yes, I think everything is here. Can thank goodness for that. My mistress will be relieved. I think your mistress should look into the drow that handled this. Your kind are nothing but vermin anyway. I imagine that a rat snuck into this. Beatings would probably be in order. I will pass along your suggestion, Kresh. Here we'll part ways. Go back to your lab, do your work, and do it swiftly. My mistress' patience is not infinite. It will be done when it's done. At this moment, coming up the other lift, is the rest of you who see, looking out uh, a little distance, maybe 50, 60 feet away, the, the cart, the knoll, the woman in the back, they're both looking into it, you know, you can see that they pulled a crate to the edge there and 
have been looking through it. You see now that the prisoner is no longer the prisoner, but looks dressed like the others. Um, and she's she's got a you know she's got her mask on, but you can tell by her motion she's kind of irritated, and she's motioning as Crash is starting to take the uh, cart away. Gerald, have you gone to find cover? Could I have snuck all the way back to the thing and just be suddenly beside them? Yeah, I think that you you manage you can manage that. Um, as <laughs> she parts from the wagon and the wagon begins moving off. Um, the she seems to be heading further up Spire. Is that right? No, I'm sorry. She seems to be heading down Spire. Um, you would think that the cart is probably heading up Spire. <sighs> oh, and I'm like clearly fixated on the cart and like, yes. like <laughs> Aramis jumps and making a, 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 a calculation face. Yeah. Gerald, like, Gerald, like moving up in between us, like, well then, I'm like, ah. yeah. <laughs> we'll be I'm needing just... to research the fourth sister. It's not a name I've, or would it be a name I've heard of? No, but Aramis. It's not a name I've heard of. Um, Sounds like a god. Anyone who has religion, but Aramis probably should take lead. Um, this would be investigate. Oh, I happen to have that. You sure okay. do. Um, religion. Okay. Um, and I think we're going against mine. Does anybody feel like they have a basis for helping with this? I feel that I might help with academia and um, a call I and think, investigate. I think that, yeah, okay. I can see that. I think Sordin's cool. first impression is like, is that a pub? <laughs> <laughs> so possible. I have the skill and the domain, so I'm rolling four dice with the help. With the help. Mm. Okay. I think I, I, I can fill Aramid's on in on what I have heard, you know. It seems like the rhyme cracks beneath is those talk of subsuming <sighs> the fourth sister. Wow. You you that is a that? carp roll. A five is the best I have on four wow. dice. Which is, uh, wow. That's bad. That's, that's terrible. Oh, well. That's terrible. Here, here you go. Oh, well. No, yeah. well. All right. Sorry. That's fine. Sorry, buddy. Okay, so let's see. Where's my little... There's my chart over there. Five is a failure and take stress. Uh, but I'll let one roll for the both of you on this stress to mind. So, Rich, roll it a d6. Whoa. That's a lot of stress. While, while he's, like, mulling over the whole fourth sister thing, I'm, like, filling in, the, you know, the gist of what I heard. Mm -hmm. You know, they're planning on, they've made three major Eidolons. They plan mm -hmm. to make a fourth. Mm. The swan seems to be procuring the last two items needed I think going by the swan's previous activities we can guess more the type more. of items yeah how about... oh two is a significant number and i don't like it yes i would not want to miss one of those uh how'd you write rich person. uh three both of you take three mind oh, oh dear lord whoa that's, uh, Just from hearing a name, oh my um, goodness! Well, Almost the, hearing a name and thinking very hard about what you remember about it. Because the two of you, you you're like the fourth sister. That seems to. Where have I heard that? And Bazaar, you're kind of wrecking fourth sister. Maybe I've. And I think it is you, Bazaar, who start with that. That reminds me of a, you know, kind of reminds you of a, of a demon. Mm -hmm. Now, whether demons have personalities is questioned. It's, it's debated by quite a number of people. Or whether it is that once they have been brought into the world, 
they assume a personality that the people summoning them are imposing on them sort of thing. Um, but there is deep thought that there are demons powerful enough that they have their own personalities, their own agendas. And this, yeah, and Bazaar, you probably are the one who says, well, I've heard of the three sisters. There's the spinner, the weaver, and the cutter. And that's when you, Aramis, that rings a bell with you. Um, they've cropped up throughout the old stories of the world. The drow position them in the night sky far above. The Alphir speak of them in hushed tones as they are considered old gods of the Northlands. They must not be worshipped and so on and so forth as the legends go. However, Aramitz, there was mention in the teachings of a fourth sister a thief, a scoundrel, powered by jealousy, pain, and fear, spurned by myth, and turned rotten like spoiled milk. She could steal anything from anywhere and bring it to the caster, a ring, a heart, a crown, a sword, a last breath. Her Eidolon is said to be a pair of fine rings linked together with silver chains, and when worn, she manifests between them as a specter, and the caster could feel her ghostly breath on their cheek. Her bond is a curse, though, as is that of all demons. She steals things from the caster, or brings them treats unasked for that lead to their mortal danger. Ooh, nice. And as the two of you are kind of discussing this, you feel as though there are cobwebs or threads, perhaps, frayed that are rubbing against the inside of your mind. Once they had been woven together, once they had been spun out, once they had been cut, but now, now they are just fragments reaching out, hungrily looking for the fate that had been stolen from them. And you, you have come to their notice. Oh, interesting. Uh, I mean, yeah. And let's handle fallout. But first of all, I get to recover, right? Um, yeah, I think I'll let you do your recovery first. Okay. You did something reckless for the sake of a good story. Okay. So you may roll a D, you had your D3. I, I, I had rolled my D3 and that was a six. So uh, that was a three. So I will reduce the stress I have suffered so far. by three points. And do I, uh, can It I, all has to be from one. Oh, okay. Then I'll reduce the mind stress. That's fine. Okay. Um, so. Let's have, I'll start from right to left. Well, let me check everybody else's ref refreshes real quick. Care how to deal with benefits, blah, blah, blah. help those who cannot help themselves do something, self-sacrifice for the benefit of your community. I don't know if those are hitting right yet. Show someone they should not have underestimated you. Yeah, and you don't have any stress at the moment. Um, engage in reckless excess right in front of a crowd. No. All right. So starting right to left, roll your shadow. And uh, if you roll a one, you will have fallout. I'm sorry, that was you, Sabine. I can do that. I mean, I, hopefully I can't do that. Nope, I rolled 10. All right. You will hang on to that stress, however. Okay. Uh, none for Fenara. Aramis, you only have ones in yours, so you're in good shape. Okay. 
Do you want me to roll or no roll? No, you're fine. Uh, Rich, okay. we took three. We took three threats. Oh, you're right. I haven't added that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, no, sorry. Thank you. The... Thank you. I'm at four then. I'm at a total. So, sorry. sorry. I had not updated my sheet. Thank you, Sabine. And honestly, I Sabine, I was looking at your, th I wasn't looking at your total, so you didn't even have to roll yet. Yeah, my total is one. Yeah. I rolled so a six. Have... Rolled a six for yes. your, uh, and did you add your mind stress in? Uh, yeah, into your slot. I don't know what slot to add it to, but. Uh, it would be on your resistances. Or it has stress, yeah, you'll add it to that one. Okay. So that goes up to four. But you rolled a six, so... I am super lost. We could talk about it later. Okay, dokie. Okay, dokie. You're fine still. Um, and uh, Sorden, you're rolling yours for Shadow. Uh, right, so I just roll 1d10? 1d10, and if it's under a four. Okay. That is a two. Oh, you will be taking fallout. All right. Um, your fallout, since you have four, is a minor fallout. You may roll a d3 to take away from that stress. Um, and I am going to give you a minor fallout on shadow. And we will... I'm going to have you jot it down and we will work on it uh, when we start next time. Right. Um, I think we're going to give you compromised. That's fair. <laughs> A friendly NPC is going to ask you to justify your strange behavior is the fallout you're currently going to be dealing with. All right. And you rolled your relief of stress that happened there. Yep. All right. And I think that we're going to come to a, well, actually, why don't we, to, are we going to follow the cart or the woman, or are we going to split up? Oh, that's a tough call, team. Do we want to Scooby-Do it? Seems like I absolutely want to Scooby-Do it, whatever that means. Uh, Scooby doing it means let's split up, gang. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, sure. It's as good a criteria as any for making a decision. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like following the lady requires fewer bodies, so to speak. Mm. Uh, and I am starting to feel like just investigating the nulls isn't enough. The opportunity to throw a spanner into the works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, After hearing I... them talk, I regret dumping that stuff just hard onto the road. <laughs> that seemed like some nasty stuff. All right, well... then. <clears throat> Who's pursuing the cart? You're on the cart. Anybody who's going with the cart? Sorden? Sorden Woods. All right. Anyone else? If, uh, oh, go ahead. You want to go with them? Then I go with Fonara and Pazritz, you the lady. But uh... yeah. Yeah. Armets? Uh, so it looks like Vizar, Fonara after the lady, Zordon, Gerald. Mm. I'll go with Daryl. That sounds fun. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. So, quick. Yeah. And I will look at you and say, Armets, please take good care of Daryl. Of course. I, I look at Bizarre and Bizarre. Yeah. Same for Fanara. Yes. I, I will. Wink. <laughs> and so the group splits and, and off. Sorted. Both of them. <laughs> take good care of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll punch you slightly in the in the upper arm. All right, so Fine. we have the four of the, the four Sword, uh, Tharza, uh, Gerald, Aramitz, we get following off after the cart. We have the three of Goliseth, Venara, and Vazar heading off following the lady. Um, 
she begins heading down Spire as the four of you follow the cart up Spire and go to New Haven. Uh, heaven, sorry, New Heaven. You go around the uh, kind of periphery a- area. And y'all have been up here before. If you remember, this is where the College of Divine Magic is, all of that sort of stuff. Um, you make your way around past, because uh, you came up um, near the sky docks. So you make your way past the solar uh, uh, basilica, which is where the, the solar pantheon's big temple is, um, and get near the Corpse of Flight SW-198. And in the stench area of the corpse, most people have moved away because there's a rotting corpse here of a sky whale. But the cart doesn't seem to mind that as it winds through the little the streets and the debris of where the corpse smashed through. You have the heavy, greasy feel of rot around you. And as you keep a safe enough distance, you see the cart reach a building. Probably at one point was a storefront. Now it is boarded up um, and turned to the loading dock there. Bang on the door of it. It opens and the cart goes in. The three of you following the lady, follow her down to Ivory Row. Um, through neighborhoods that are nice, if going a little bit to pot. And uh, she arrives at a mansion that has seen better days. It's a bit overgrown. And as she comes up to the front door of it, you see her reach for the doorbell, the bell pull. She pulls it once, twice, and then the most remarkably strange thing happens. The porch beside her sort of swivels and you see a stairway descending down where it swivels and she looks about furtively and descends. We'll find out later if she noticed anybody following her. But for now, we'll end with her head descending past where you could see and that stairway sealing back up. And that's where we're gonna stop. Um, so, we got, a, we got a good bit in this time, I feel like. Um, found out yeah. some things and we can decide a little what we're going to do next time around. I mean, this was meant to be a recon, recon trip, mostly. I mean, weren't supposed to engage. Now we split up, so who knows what people may feel like doing. No but, plan survives completely intact. Contact with uh, the enemy. But we are aware now we're dealing with two very dangerous situations when we're at half strength on both of them. So, huh. But we're going to end there. Um, let's do a little stars and wishes. And then once we get off the air, Rich, I'll go over kind of where we were. We'll, I'll, I want to kind of deal with all of us with our stress and all that sort of stuff. Thank you. Do a little bookkeeping on, on everybody there. Cool. All right. Let's... Uh, uh, I tend to start either with my uh, camera or with the thing, but let's let's just go dead in the center. Rich, tell us uh, what stars you might have this time. Uh, yeah, I feel like I have to give a star first off to Gerald for the just again the second time in our campaign where I thought, oh, he's gonna nope. Nope, not the better part of Valor. Going to jump right in, and that was great. Uh, really fun. And and also Star, and I'm not trying to hog a whole lot, but I have to give a Star for the like ripping up the cloak 
like uh, as as breadcrumbs. And that was a double star because like Tyler, you made the offer. And so that was really, really clever because it was like, how do you put a bite in this? Oh, that's that's how that's a that's a thing. Dang, that stinks, uh, which was pretty great. Um, enjoyed Vazar's uh, that little parting moment, even though it was hurried, was really, really fun. The Vazar, Zordon, Gerald, all that bit that you did, Sabine was really, really great. And I'll pause on stars. I have more, but I don't want to hog. So there we go. All righty. Thank you very much. Jen, what stars might you have? Uh, I really enjoyed your Noel performance, Tyler. That was fun. It was very, very classic. I, I love aside scenes where you get to see the folks that you're working against just doing what they're doing and not, not being involved with the characters at all. So those were some fun scenes with, of course, the deliciousness that, you know, in a box a few feet away is Gerald. Um, that's always good. Uh, I, I liked seeing Perch and everybody's reactions to how different it is to be on Lower Perch. Um, and there was some good character work from everybody around that. And yeah, I liked the action, but I'll, I'll pass things along. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And uh, Sabine, any stars? Yeah, uh, lots of stars. Stars to everyone. I <laughs> loved the, the no laugh. That was, that was great. I also loved Sorden and his breastplate and the whole scene around the polishing the breastplate and uh, Gerald uh, just taking it from him and uh, you're not doing it right. That, yeah, that's the Gerald I really, I really adore. So, and Aramitz with his brothers of, uh, uh, oh, what are they, the Je witness, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, impression <laughs> have anybody? Yes, that was great. I love this, I love this. I will have, want to have more of Aramitz doing that than anyone and uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. Jan, any stars? Uh, there was a lot of stuff going on again. Uh, that was great. Uh, this, this, we, we have so much things to, to work with. It's like like we need to split up because otherwise we definitely will never get along to getting all of it. Um, and I really liked uh, our myths. Let's see. What, <laughs> I have to try to remember what hasn't been said yet. Uh, yeah, the Noel sorry we said. Aramis is um, uh, Jehovah Witness talk. <laughs> to, just, but, damn, she has time for you. I'm like, oh my god. So I, just, <laughs> uh, I loved uh, Fazar's little um, moment. Oh, wait, that was awesome. Maybe, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's uh, it was it was fun. Awesome, thank you very very much. And last but not least, Alex, any stars? Um, I mean, it'll be dittoing a fair few. Um, um, I again really enjoyed this having little bits of uh, back and forth with Hazard, just little little tweaks to scenes and stuff here and there. Which I really liked. Uh, also, I really loved doing the, the polishing scene with Zordon. That was fun. Uh, I will again ditto <laughs> Aramitz's preaching, and especially the line that Zordon, uh, Jan mentioned. That was just, yeah, perfect. Uh, all your voices, all the different voices were excellent, as always. Um, and I really. <laughs> Just, I feel that Jen is really good at doing the. We're having a conversation across a room with faces, with just. Which, for anyone who's just hearing this, the, this and not seeing the video, it's you know you're missing out. Awesome, thank you very very much uh, for my stars, uh, Jen. Once again. You are such a delight for keeping things on track. It always is so important to have someone 
who you remember all the things that can bring up and bring things into context so beautifully. And then I thought we had, you, you know, there were great role-playing bits. Uh, I liked our planning session. I loved uh, when we're in character planning. I think that's fun to see because all of our personalities are different. And that, that is really cool to, to be a part of. I liked that everybody leaned into my dream opening. I thought that was a really neat uh, opening bit and every the things that people came up with, I was really, really pleased with. Um, Jan, I, I liked the polishing the breastplate, I think for a slightly different reason. I think it's showing something you're doing with that character that is really interesting to me. Um, I, I am I am so there for this this character development. This may it, it feels like Sorden is taking a new pride in himself or looking for a, a new path in himself. And it is lovely to see it done in very subtle ways. Um, the way you're talking, the way you're acting, this this sort of all of this is is really good good role play work i just think that's that's lovely um and the rest are, are echoes i i you know can i love the preaching bit i love the bravery of gerald jumping up into the wagon to find this um i thought i when you did the three knots for going up i was like oh that is brilliant um i like i like seeing yours and bizarre's interaction i liked the bizarre just I can't help but go and find out more. I'm going to go with you. Um, I love that. I thought that was fun. Um, so great stuff. And I'm kind of glad we got to see some stress accumulate. And uh, it feels like we're going to have some stress start to accumulate more. Um, I'm, I'm getting a little of the hang of it, though. Boy, y'all roll well. So uh, let's get back to wishes real quick. Um, Alex? You get to lead us off. Um, I want shit to kick off. I want to see Zordon again to get to use his giant sword again. I want Gerald to be able to get a chance to, to have to use his fighting skills. Um, yeah, I, basically I want shit to kick off in all directions. Excellent. Uh, Young. Uh, I my, my, my biggest wish is that I could make it there next week, but I'm going to be out of the country. <laughs> ah, that's right. Uh, that's going to be annoying because I want to follow up on this. Um, I will try to have us at the very least keep from <laughs> being in the middle of the party before you get back. The party is going to be very much you. So I can I can do us around other things. So we are playing next week because it's the fourth of July, and I don't know if any of you Americans oh, have I guess, plans yeah. for the, the the this evening. Shin Rich, what are y'all? I thinking? mean, for me, this this game is kind of in the morning and early day when oh, I'm no. not doing anything Fourth of July related. Mm -hmm. If I do something Fourth of July, it'll be later in the day, like four hours, five hours more after game ends okay. well, well let's we'll we'll talk on that real quick once we get on there let's do that okay. so okay. so yeah um so, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, other than that my wishes um i i, I would love to see uh, well i mean i will not be there next time but i would love to see more of funara and fizara specifically uh next time um and yeah just looking forward to see where this is gonna go cool um, pulls back around into you, Sabine. Wishes? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I would, I would kind of, I would like to, like to trade barbs with Fonara about situations, not about each other, or maybe about each other. And maybe I have to uh, do my fighty ritual, and she can then make fun of me. That would be, that would be like nice. But uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I just hope that we will not fall off a uh, perch. That thumb goes outside of the fist. 
Ha. Uh -huh. No, it does not. Not if I write it another way. And you know, I can con reality into believing that what I write is true. <laughs> Hopefully you can con your thumb into believing it's not broken. <laughs> I learned that. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Uh, Jen, wishes? Uh, I, I hope somebody gives Gerald shit for his robe. Ah. <laughs> uh, I need that in my life. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to see more of this sneaky human machinery mansion and what's going on inside of it. Um, if, if we get into a fight, I want fighting around Goloset to be like a key thing that I do. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I remember to do that. Um, and yeah, no, that's, that's about it. I'm, I'm curious to see what, uh, what team follow the Knowles gets up to, but I know that I will. So awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. And Rich finishing out with you. Gosh, everybody took all the good wishes. I feel like we're coming to a head, like we're near. I, I wish that that's true. Like, this is really cool. And it seems like a big revelatory moment uh, for us to be close to dealing with this. You mentioned a couple of times that we were close and I really hope because I, I want to be successful. It's, it, we've worked so hard and I'm, I'm very excited to see us uh, be at the precipice uh, doesn't mean we have to be successful but the the idea of us getting near the end is really exciting not the end of the game but but like this particular direct thing I wish that we find closure doesn't have to be just tomorrow or next session because there's no Zordon so maybe not but anyway I, I'm rambling but I think it makes sense absolutely thank you very much and uh folks at home i hope you enjoyed it i hope all of y'all enjoyed it and rich i turn it back over to you cool uh we'll be back in a week sans yawn but we will uh, endeavor on into the spire thanks everybody for watching and i uh, hope to see you again <laughs>